Hey family, it's Danielle, and today I'm going to share with you guys five tips on homeschooling to high school. So if you guys are interested in learning more about homeschooling to high school, then stick around for the video. The snob life. The homeschooling life. The bar life. The non-traditional life. The family life. Telling it how it is. Life outside the box. And if you don't know what that means, it's the non-traditional mommy. Bye-bye. Before we jump into this video, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Danielle and I am the non-traditional mommy. And on Sundays, we talk about Sunday school, all things homeschool and school related and such. So if you find those type of things interesting, then hit the subscribe button and join my family to the rest of my non-traditional family. You guys are the MVPs and I love you bunches. Now, let's talk about homeschooling to high school. A little background, I am homeschooling my first child to or through high school. She is now a senior. So she's the second child that I homeschooled, but she's the first one that will be a graduate of homeschooling. So when I initially started homeschooling her, the goal was to get her to sixth grade. And then we thought we would let her spread her wings into public school and fly. And she opted to stay home and we just kept going, kept going, kept going. And now she is a senior. So I wanted to share with you guys some things that I've kind of picked up and learned along the way for homeschooling to high school. So I now have her who's a senior. My next daughter will be a sophomore and I have a freshman um, coming up as well. So she'll be a freshman this school year. So I'll have three in high school this school year. So let's talk about the five things that I have learned. First thing, and I say this every single time I give any type of suggestions or advice or thoughts or opinions, whatever you want to call these things when it comes to homeschooling. And that is the big R, relax. Relax, relax, relax. Breathe. You got this, you can do this. It is not um, flying out of space, it's not rocket science, you got this. So just relax and breathe your way to, and breathe your way through it. I know without a doubt that this is easier said than done. If you can remember to tell yourself along the way to relax, it will make this journey a whole lot more pleasurable and a little bit easier as well. So that is the very first and most important tip. Number two is to cultivate a love for learning. So as you're homeschooling through, as you're homeschooling to high school, those first nine years, and I say nine because you have kindergarten. So kindergarten through eighth grade, you just simply want to cultivate a love for learning. I think a lot of times we get caught up in, oh my gosh, they need to learn how to read. They need to learn how to do, you know, adding and subtracting. They need to learn how to do this and they need to learn that. And then as they get into sixth and seventh grade, it becomes, are we doing enough science? Are we learning history and all of these other things? And I think we forget to just cultivate a love for learning. If you can do that, if you can set a foundation to where your child absolutely just love learning and learning about everything, then by the time they get to high school, when they are earning credits and the um, grades count, because quite frankly, K through eighth, the grades really don't count, you guys. I mean, they're real, nobody's looking at your eighth grade transcript unless you're trying to set a foundation for your child to get into a certain high school um, once they get there. But K through eight is kind of like you really are just trying to get them to love learning. So one of the ways to do that is tip number three, explore different ways of learning, explore different things. So through those K through eighth years, that is the time to explore all the different learning styles that are out there to really figure out what helps your child 
Thrive, you know, the Charlotte Masons, the unschooling, the classical learning. There's just so many different ways to learn and having having the opportunity to take those years to just explore all these different ways to learn so that your child just has this natural desire to learn will help them once they get um, to high school because by the time they get to high school you want them to be able to self-pace and self-learn and if they have a natural gift or a natural desire to learn the subjects like algebra and chemistry and all of those things are going to come a little bit easier even if it isn't their strong suit. So I hope that makes sense. Number two is to cultivate a love for learning and number three is to explore all of the different types of learning styles. Number four, don't sweat the small stuff and I know this seems like it would fit with relax, but relax and not sweating the small stuff is two different things. So by don't sweat the small stuff, I am talking about trying to cross off every single little checklist that you may come across that says your child should know this by this age. I remember when my daughter was going to third grade, which for me, I thought was pivotal. I remember third grade for myself, been the year that we started learning like multiplication and um, division was in, um, introduced and all these other things. I just remember for me, third grade was like a pivotal year in my life. And so I bought this book, What Your Third Grader Needs to Know. And I'm like going through this book and I'm having like a panic attack as I'm going through this book, thinking about all these things that she needs to know by the time she finishes third grade and honestly by the time we finished third grade she did not know all those things but midway through i am like stressed out and i'm stressing her out because i'm sweating just the tiniest little things that we may have not gotten to or the, um, the, the tiniest concept that she may have not grasped yet. And I'm like freaking out over that. And what I learned is that there was no need to sweat that because by the time she got to high school, she had it. I, I correlate this to potty training. You know, people sweat the fact that their two-year-old may not be potty trained and, you know, they freak out about it and it becomes like this obsessive thing. And it's like, don't sweat the fact that they're not potty trained. They're talking, they're walking, they're doing everything else. They're not potty trained. By the time they're going, by the time they go to kindergarten, chances are they're going to be potty trained and nobody's going to be asking at what age were you potty trained? It's not important in the long run. As long as they eventually get it when they need to get it, it's not that important. So learning to not sweat the small stuff, just being able to let that go and say, okay, we'll come back to that. You're not ready for that concept or that concept is, um, stressing us both out. So let's take some time, move away from that, and then come back to that and just not sweat it. That's a big thing is to not sweat the small stuff. When my daughter, who's now going into ninth grade, I talked about this in another video, how we did a year with no books and how she is so adamant about her her taking control of her learning and what she learns and for a long time you guys that was stressing me out and i was like button heads with her about learning and how i felt she needed to do it and now what i have learned and have truly grasp is I'm not going to sweat that with her. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. As long as she's reading, as long as she's writing, she can do basic math. <laughs> I'm not going to sweat these little um, tiny details of 
um, you know, physical science or um, civics or whatever the case may be. I'm not going to sweat those small things. So that brings me to number five. Focus on the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. If you do nothing else for that K to eight through high school, nothing else but focus on the reading, writing, and math, you have done your job. And believe it or not, your child is going to have a leg up because here's what I've learned. If they can read, they can learn history. Easy. Learning history is all about the books you put in front of them, the articles you put in front of them, the magazines you put in front of them, whatever um, your choice of reading is. If they have a love for reading, which goes back to cultivate a love for learning. So if they have a love for reading, then they're going to learn history and things like that. With same concept with writing. If they have a love for writing, the English and the grammar and the, the um, penmanship and all of that stuff is going to fall under that category. So cultivating a love for those things is gonna help with other subjects. So for example, my daughter now who's a senior, she did struggle a lot with grammar. And so what I did is I started a mother-daughter journal with her and every night I would write her a letter, anything we, I would write to her and then I would give it to her. The next day she would read my letter, she would write back to me and then I would correct it. I would correct her grammar in that letter write back to her, give it to her, she would write back. And we did this for a whole year. So A, not only did that cultivate a love for writing for her because it was love letters from mother and daughter, but I was also indirectly teaching her grammar and writing skills. And now she has not only just this book of love letters from me to her, but it helped her with her grammar. So just finding little ways like that to, again, cultivate a love for learning. And even still with my kids, my older kids who have cell phones, when they would text me back and forth, I did a lot of texting, you guys. Um, I remember my husband would say, why are you texting her when she's just right there? You can call her down. And I'm like, because I'm teaching grammar. And so I could text and she would text me back and I could correct her grammar in the text message that she sent me. So it's unconventional, but these ways work. And again, it's cultivating a love for learning because you're doing it through avenues that they like and that they find fun and exciting. And then going into math. If they have that basic foundation of math, then that's going to help when it comes to science. That's going to help when it comes to chemistry and all of those other subjects. Just having that basic foundation and feeling very, very confident about that basic foundation. Because what I found is if that basic foundation is rocky, then it builds anxiety and stress when going into the upper subjects. So I'll use my daughter that's going into ninth grade. She still struggles a little bit with some um, division. That gives her anxiety for going into algebra. Pre-algebra, she has so much anxiety. We had to take, so, take it so very slow. And her anxiety is just coming from her um, lack of confidence when it comes to division. So, if you can really, really build a strong foundation with the basic concepts, that's going to help with everything else. So again, focus on the three R's those first eight years. And of course, if you can throw other things in there, throw them in there. But again, don't sweat the small stuff. And the final bonus tip for homeschooling to high school is allow for self learning. To me, this is so important because the way we do high school is very much so just like college. 
It is self-learning. They need to be able to self-pace, but stay on pace. They, they, they need to be able to learn on their own, understand, and be able to ask the correct questions to be able to get the answers that they're looking for. So throughout those years, allow for some self-learning in there, allow for them to be able to teach themselves without feeling like you have to be 100% hands on the entire time. And this will help them once they get to high school to be able to self-learn. And I think that that's so important because when I went to college, you had several people there that may have blew the ACT or SAT out the water or who had these great GPAs or were excellent students in high school. But then when they got to college and the professor was like on Monday, OK, I'm teaching this concept. I'll see you next Monday. Have your work done they fell off the bandwagon. It became very hard for them to self-regulate, self-pace, self-teach, and to um, do it on their own. So you had these kids who may have been excellent test takers or excellent students, but could not self teach or self learn. I hope that makes sense. Versus if you're an independent self learner, even if a concept or something, a subject is hard for you or you struggle with understanding, you're able to find the resources, get the resources, do what you need to do in order to learn that concept or that subject or whatever. You are able to self-regulate, I like to say, and figure out how to get the answer that you need to get to that particular problem. So along the way, kind of step back a little bit and let them self-learn. You can do that as early as kindergarten. When it comes to like reading, you can give them books and just let them read the pictures and not feel like you have to be right over them. Um, you can give them little art books where they and you have them work through those art books on their own. So there's all kind of different ways for a child to be able to self-learn. So a subject, again, as history, you can say, hey, here's your um, reading book for history. You're going to work through this on your own. And again, they can self-learn. You come in, you teach the basic foundation for that week and let them self-learn for the rest of the week. There's all kinds of different ways to allow a child to self-learn. So there you have it, you guys. Those are my five tips plus a bonus on homeschooling to high school. So let's go through those one more time. Relax. Number one, the most important, relax. Number two is to cultivate a love for learning. Number three is to explore different ways to learn, different options, different ideas on learning. Number four, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't let those tiny little details get into your brain or into your mind or stress you out. Just don't sweat the small stuff, you guys. Focus on the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. If you're focused on those things, the rest will fall into place. And then your bonus tip is to allow for your child to self-learn without you feeling like you have to be over their shoulders coaching and teaching along the way. Tell me some tips or ideas that have helped you homeschool to high school. If you have homeschooled to high school, I would love to know what are some of the things that you learned along the way that helped you or that you wish you would have known. Drop those in the comments below, especially for me. I still have seven coming up that have not made it to high school. So I would love to hear more tips and for all of our new homeschoolers that may be here trying to figure this thing out. So leave those in the comments comments below. If you want to learn more about homeschooling, then check out these videos, you guys. And if you're still here, you're now an MVP. So you need to hit the subscribe button and join my family. To the rest of my MVPs, I love you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.